In an earlier video, I talked to you about the three measures of center, mean, median, and mode. In this one, I introduced the three measures of variation to you, range, variance, and standard deviation. Why do we need three measures of variation, you ask? I'll explain in the next six minutes and let you know which one's the right one for you. Let's go. Give me six minutes and I'll teach you something new. Now, let's get to work. Hi, Mark here from Six Minute Statistics, and I'm going to talk to you about the variation of data in this video. Most people have a pretty good feel for what the center of a distribution is. What is a little trickier, however, is what is meant by variation. Other names for variation you may be more familiar with include spread and dispersion, or skedasticity, there's a weird one. Regardless of what you call it, we're talking about how close or how far apart the data values fall from one another. Here are examples of two distributions that have similar measures of center, but very different levels of variation. Just like when I talked about measures of center, this topic only makes sense if we're working with quantitative data or numbers. So let's get some data to use as an example. Being a teacher, I have easy access to exam grades from students. I have grades for 239 students from a former Introduction to Business Statistics class that I teach at the University of South Florida. As I said before, looking at the raw data can make your mind spin. Prepare for an old movie reference here. I feel as though I'm looking at the matrix when I scroll through these data values. It's impossible to make any sense of it. However, using some software, it's pretty easy to get the following descriptive statistics. I'll let other YouTubers show you how to do the calculations if you're interested in that. I prefer to keep it simple and let the software do the math for us. I prefer to talk to you about what the numbers mean instead of how to find them. Let's start with the easiest one, the range. Much like the mode when we looked at measures of center, the range is really easy to find. We simply take the difference between the largest value in our data set and the smallest value in our data set. In this case, the largest exam score was 100. The smallest was 42. So when we look at the difference between them, we find that the range is 58. You can see how the bigger this number is, the farther apart the extremes of the data set will fall. The range does a really good job at looking at the extremes of the data set and the difference between them. However, it only considers those two values. And because it only considers those two values, the range isn't that useful as a measure of variation. Easy to find, but not very useful. Kind of a lot like the mode. The second measure I want to talk to you about is the variance of the data set. How about this for a definition? Ready? The variance is the sum of the squared deviations of the data values from their mean divided by n minus <laughs> 1. Yeah, probably not working for you. You or any other student I've ever taught over the last 30 plus years. How about this formula? Let's take a look at it. S squared is equal to the sum of the quantity x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. Any better? Again, probably not. Well, hold on a minute. You've heard me say that I'm only going to show you formulas if they think they can help. And I think this one can. See if I can help you with it. Ready? Don't worry about the entire formula. Let's just focus on two symbols in the formula. The value of x and the value of x bar. In an earlier video, I explained how we use the symbol x to represent an individual observation. So if you score 80 on the exam, that's your value of x. If someone else scores a 90, that's their value of x. The X bar symbol is what we use for a sample mean. So this X minus X bar portion of the formula is taking a look at a single observation and comparing it to how far it falls away from the mean. So let's say the mean was 75. If you scored 76, you have an X minus X bar value of positive one. You fell one point above the mean. If I scored a 60, 60 minus 75, I was 15 points below the mean. I'm a negative 15. The x minus x bar values represent the distances of the x's from the mean. And what this formula says to do is to not just take a look at your score or my score, let's take a look at everybody's score and put them together. Now, because some of the distances between the x's and the x bar are positive and other ones are negative, if we just simply summed the distances together, they would always sum to zero. Not helpful. So the two things we can do with that, we can either take an absolute value, not a lot of fun, or we can square those distances. Again, not a lot of fun, 
But by doing that, the, the main point I want to make here is the variance looks at how far observations fall from the mean. Bigger distances, bigger variation. The bigger the variance is, the bigger the variation is going to be. Now, some of you guys were able to follow that, and that's great. And others are like, uh-oh, what just happened? I can't follow that. And that's okay, too. Really, no worries. If you saw it, that'll help. If you didn't, it's probably not going to hurt that much because the variance is just used for calculations. And we're not about calculation. So that brings us to our third measure of variation. We say there's three measures of variation, and technically that's true. However, in reality, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So we can really think of the variance and the standard deviation as being a team. I like to think of the variance as the calculation part and the standard deviation as the interpretation part. But I'm going to say more about that in a little bit. For now, I'm going to formally present the three measures of variation, the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. So I like I did for the other three measures of center, I'm going to ask a question. Which measure is best? For measures of center, you may recall the answer was it depends on the shape of the distribution of the data set you're working with. If you don't remember that, I'll provide a link in the description of this video that you can go and check that one out as well. For variation, it's a lot simpler than that. The standard deviation is considered the best measure of variation. Why, you ask? Because it's interpretable. Now, is that a word? I don't even know. But what I mean by that is we can get some useful information from interpreting the standard deviation. How, you ask? That's a great question. By watching my video and interpreting the standard deviation, of course. Now, go get to work.